Podnet Media. Yeah, it's the cool podcast. It's time for another episode. Thanks for listening to the show, everybody. We got a brand new episode coming out right now. It's going to be cool. We've got some stuff to get into. It's just going to be your usual same old, same old. Nothing crazy to see here. I'm glad that we don't have anything else to worry about. Nothing. It's just going to be a fun and cool and normal, normal stuff. We got some segments and uh, that's pretty much it. I really probably should do a better job of hyping this up, making it, making it sound cool <laughs> instead of sounding boring, you know? Cool podcast. Whoa, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's time for the show today. It's gonna be really fun. This isn't all, this is gonna be a musical episode. (laughs) We're gonna sing. I'm going to sing a song. We got some cool stuff today for the show. Some of your favorite segments are coming up here just in a minute. Like I said, everything's going well. We're doing podcasting like you know that we would. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else to see. Nothing else to see here. Shout out to the patrons. For shout out to the patrons for listening. Thanks for listening to the show today. We're gonna get into some fun stuff, everybody. It's gonna be cool. Just like you know it should be. Greetings, be Wolf. It's me. Whoa. Your boss. Ha ha ha. It's Christopher Schmidt. It's our boss. He's just calling in, I guess. Wasn't expecting that. But, uh, thanks for. Uh, what's going on, Call Christopher? I just wanted to thank you for helping with the beta testing for our re-education program. Well, it's it's no problem here. Uh, no big deal. Like it's it's the least I could do. Helping out with Podnet Media. My engineers have tweaked the system based on your feedback so that we can officially start the process. Well, that's good. I'm glad that my feedback could help with the Podnet Media re-education program it is very good news indeed oh one more thing be oh, wolf what's that your friend Kreb, the host of hottest stuff with Kreb and jack yeah i know the guy he's pretty cool will be one of our first participants in the newly launched podcaster improvement program oh okay that's good uh yeah i'm sure he can use some He's a pretty good podcaster. Unfortunately, he received a disciplinary strike for advertising unauthorized oh. materials on his podcast. Yeah, I was kind of worried about that. He's probably he's, he's probably fine, though, right? He's we hope good. through this program he will grow and learn from his mistakes and become a great yeah. podcaster, much like yourself. Oh, well, thanks. That's... That's high praises coming from you, the CEO of Podnut Media, the cool Christopher podcast. Schmidt. Uh, thanks for giving us some of these compliments. It's really great. That is all for now. Keep right. up the good work. Oh, thanks. Ta-ta. Wow, that's cool. That was Christopher Schmidt. He's the CEO of Podnut Media, just popping in to say hello and tell us some interesting information. The the um, podcaster re-education program. I guess. I guess Krebs going to be doing that, which I'm, I think he probably needs some help. I, I don't know. I think he does a pretty good job over there with him and Jack. Kreb and Jack. They're on Podnut Media. So, 
their fellow podcasters, along with myself. Uh, well, I guess hmm, that should be good, hopefully. Well, let's get into the next, the first segment. We haven't uh, covered this one in a while. I know that I pretty much say that for every segment, every every single thing. It's all new to me. It's all brand spanking new, and I'm glad for it to be back. It's a really cool segment, you know? We love when we do these that uh, we miss, and we want to hear them again. We want to hear them again and again. It's the contest corner, baby. Yep. It's contest corner. Know what I'm saying? Know what I mean? I need a good applause. There we go. Might have to be the new applause sound. Yay! Well, let's get into our first segment here. It's the contest corner. This is gonna be cool. We got a guy here. He's a giveaway guy. We gotta hear from him. He's one of the coolest guys around. I was watching some of his videos. He did a tour of his living room, some of the new furniture he's got. He's got all kinds of different, <laughs> different things going on in his channel. Uh, but we want to see who won something because he's he's really one of the premier giveaway guys out there. Hey, what is up, everybody? <laughs> and as soon as you get, as soon as you press play on this video, you can see the the OBS uh, doing the Matrix style, um, where it's got a million different screens going into each other. Uh, but he's going to do a giveaway. Who won the big Sony Xbox? The Sony Xbox. Welcome a, to the winner that results. That must be a new for the thing. Haven't heard of that free one. Free giveaway of the Sony PlayStation 5 Next Gen System and the Xbox Series X. This was a double winner Way announcement. This is a double, double winner, winner contest. Two winners um, for the Next Gen double Systems winner. along with some games. This is currently... April 9th, 2021, and this is now the official end of the contest. This contest has ended. This contest wah, is crazy. Wah, wah. <laughs> but <laughs> there is many more giveaways currently going on <laughs> on the channel. I can't stress that enough. So <laughs> please take part in that. Enough. And also, more giveaways on in the future and more PlayStation 5 Series enough. X and possibly Series S in the future. Stay tuned. Um, and I'm working on some gaming code giveaways as well. Maybe some digital codes. All right. So I we are going to get right into the winner results. We have two winners. One chose to be anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. I don't blame them. Um, especially in the current uh, stage the current of my climb. channel with people being attacked. I talked about this Wait, what? in a previous video. It's it's uh, a horrible thing. What? And we have another winner. Hold that on. To be. Someone was attacked. One of the winners. Holy crap! I gotta. I need to watch one of the other videos and figure out what that's all about. Jeez. Hmm. I have to do a follow up to that. I don't think we have time to get into all the Murray and Jo8 drama. But uh, let's keep going here. That was for the Series X, I believe. It's going to be my pinned comment. Again, I'm still doing the pinned comment on the original giveaway video. Of and I'm course. making a separate winner announcement in case of you guys course. can't see the pinned comments because I know we that's gotta been a problem. we got to see the pinned comment. A huge congrats to YouTube user Scott Harrison. Way. An anonymous user. You just won a Series X. That was Scott. Scott won the Scott Series won X. Scott won the Series X. And a PS5. Whoa. That was the anonymous user. The anonymous Did user. Did you hear me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. A little bit of a hype uh, hype train here, right? <laughs> hype but train. But, again, this is a big... These people are mad ecstatic, people are and I don't blame them. Um, and I, this is awesome when this happens, because it's both awesome. of these winners um, explained to me that they've been trying since day one. They've been following me on Twitter. One. They've been trying my tips. They've been they never <laughs> missed a direct. They never missed a Walmart drop. So this is this is awesome. I love it that it's hey, awesome. listen. 
Everybody is eligible to win a Murray and Janeway giveaway. You could just be nonchalant. I want to win one. Welcome by. <laughs> but these guys really been waiting for this giveaway, and they've been working hard, both of them. So I'm, I'm really, really happy. That's great. They've been working hard at winning the giveaway by, I guess, entering all the different giveaways. I don't know any other way that you could do that. Just kind of keep your eye on the channel. On the channel. And see when the next giveaways are. <laughs> That's my impression. Let's see. We got another one. Then I'm going to watch some more of his videos. Just on my own time. I've got to forget about this guy, you know? How could you forget? Sometimes I'm looking for a video. I need, you know, honestly need some cheering up sometimes. The way things have been going now. Not because of Podnet Media. I don't even want to make any assumptions. Uh, need to cheer up. Go watch some Murray videos. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the results for the Apple MacBook Pro 13-inch 8GB Retina. This Retina. was the March was 7th crazy. channel giveaway for Murray and J08. It is now officially April 7th. April 7th, 2021. This now marks the official end of this contest. The official end of this channel contest. This the end contest of the channel is oh, now no. closed. Oh, no. We have come up with a winner. The winner contacted, contacted me back. That's correct. The real winner. <laughs> so now I'll get a flood of fake usernames, uh, but too late. We're it's already attack. wrapped up with the address on it, ready to be shipped out. Actually going to be shipping this out tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. Wonderful people, wonderful family. Um, a graphic designer, actually, mm. according to his wife that I spoke with. So we could use um, that Mac And very laptop. awesome. We're going to get to the winner in a minute here. You can use that Mac Word laptop of no, to do some design. I did design. order another three of these. Oh, my God. Um, for future channel giveaways. And I will be doing the new M1 again uh, due to popular request. But this model is one of the most requested giveaways that I've done on my channel. This is one of the most popular models that I've done. I cannot do enough of them. Cannot stress that enough. People want a laptop for free. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. Now... I know a lot of people ask, where does this guy get all the money to do these damn giveaways? Like, what in the heck? He must be a millionaire. He's definitely not a millionaire. I watched a video about when he's inside of his apartment. But um, I do follow him on Twitter now. And I, and I have my theory, which is that... I have my theory because he's always posting about when the different PlayStations are going on sale... Um, Walmart just has a bunch of new PlayStation, everyone go buy one. So I think what he does is he keeps track of when these things drop, and he buys them, and then he flips them online somewhere. Or he sells them somehow. I think he buys gadgets, ones that are hot on the market, and he sells them. And he, that's, he makes a buck that way. So that's why he always ends up having all these electronics i think i don't know i'm gonna have to ask <laughs> let me become friends with him and ask um this kind of thing but the outcome of this contest results theory. was incredible either incredible that or feedback, he's a big fan of comments. figuring out when playstations um, go on sale just overall the contest was contest out of this park and we um, gotta get to some more contests the macbook pros have become Hurry the biggest giveaways on the channel they used to be stop the switch. <laughs> talking get right into the Let's winner get it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a Zach Wild there. All right. I'll read you the pinned comment, and then I am making this separate uh, video for you guys to see in your video feed. Because I know not Let's everybody sees it. the pinned comments, right? Funko, Funko. Terrible. Absolutely oh, no. horrific. Let me get my glasses on. I'm blind in the back. <laughs> Remember that song by Meatloaf? <laughs> blind as a bird. A huge congrats to YouTube user Harkin Landefeld. 
You just won a freaking MacBook wow. Pro, yo. Dang. How does it feel to be the proud owner? Big shout out to every <laughs> single one of you that entered and commented. You guys are the reason we I can do these it. massive sick giveaways. I can't stress that enough. That's how it works <laughs> on this channel. People can't ask. That enough. Now you know. Hmm. You are all Interesting. I just asked. How does he do this? People ask. Can't stress that enough. That's his famous catchphrase. Okay, we got to get to some more giveaways and stuff. We got more segments to do. We're going to stay in this one. What kind of other stuff? Well, I looked up... I was just thinking this the other day. Uh, contest Corner. It's the Contest Corner. It's the name of the segment. I never thought about Googling. I never thought about just Googling Contest Corner to see what comes up. And I found a couple of them. Contestcorner.com, <laughs> of all places, for a winning lifestyle. They've got contest listings, how to enter and win the giveaways, which we looked into a little bit of that with the contest girl. Sweepstakes Saturday, winners, fitness weight loss. Now that's something I need to read about. Let's see, they got the Amazon gift card, Gleam List. I've looked at Gleam List before. Not very exciting. We like to look at stuff that's interesting, cool, exciting, and fun. Uh, hmm. This is in uh, How to Win the Giveaways. So they, it's just a post that has some links to other articles on the site about how to win the giveaways. But this is kind of interesting. Some different, uh, some different uh, comments. The top one here from Pat Patricia. Patricia says. I would use the gift card to buy toiletries that I usually cannot afford. So you hate to read stuff like that. <gasps> and thank you so much. Thank you so much for the chance to win. Would be great to have along on vacation. Good luck to all. Really want One Direction ticket. I'm the biggest fan ever. I have anything you can think of them of theirs from pics to album. I love them and I want to see them for my birthday. Help. Says Elena. April Davis asks, My question is as follows. I have come up with something different, and I cannot find a recipes like this one, so I was wanting to enter it in the cookie contest, but don't know how. Could Please, could you help me in doing this? I would appreciative. Thank you, April Davis. <laughs> Beeb. <laughs> Beeb says, Hi, Hollywood Surf Exchange. Oh, there's commenting on the comment and explaining the contest submission. Beeb. Uh, anyway, contest corner at the official. official. So the, here they've got Winnable Wednesday. It's Winnable Wednesday, everybody. We're going to let's read this article. Winnable Wednesday. Welcome to our brand new weekly giveaway link up, Winnable Wednesday. Here you'll find low entry giveaways with great odds of winning. If your giveaway ends in the next two weeks and has less than 200 entries, please share it with us. In the linky below, if your giveaway does not meet either of those criteria, please post it in our sweepstake Saturday linky instead. Your first, Mr. Linky's Magical Widgets. So you have to fill out the form, put your name and a URL to some of the contests, and then click enter. Now where do you find the contests? Do you have to be on the... Hmm. So you want to get these giveaways with odds of winning. Please leave a comment after linking Mr. Linky. I don't see any comments. I don't know if anyone's entered the week, week, uh, weekend winnable Wednesday. High odds of winning. Consistency is key when it comes to winning. Aim low. Another way that I maximize my odds of winning is by focusing my efforts on giveaways with low entries. The less entries a contest has, the better odds you'll have of winning it. So that makes sense. Just the the numbers will shake out eventually, and maybe you'll win something. It's the contest corner. I've got another contest corner. This one's on Facebook, and it just says their avatar has some text on it that says contest corner. Here it comes. Some easy, some tough. Some make you pick. Some make you think. 
It's going to be the new log line of the contest corner. It's the contest corner, here it comes. Some easy, some tough, some make you pick, some make you think. Okay, it's the contest corner. Uh, <laughs> when I scroll down here on this Facebook page, uh, the first post says, sold out. That's just a picture of a gun. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> what's that all about? That's kind of weird. So this is some very weird, uh, uh, it's very weird is what it is. I gotta get my gun sound back in here. Do I really want that on the soundboard? There's no going back after that. Uh, oh God, <laughs> that was so loud. Okay. Uh, so they had a gun for their contest. It says we have a Springfield Anyway, here they have guns, and then they have a big list of names with a check mark behind them, beside them. Juan Garcia, Joey, Manuel, Matias, Rafael. Well, these are all the people. We have six numbers, and another post says we have six numbers left. Let's get them out today so we can raffle. Another picture of a gun. Uh, I think it's the same post. Same post again. They have a Springfield uh, weapon. So I think they're, they were trying to enter people to win this gun, <laughs> which is kind of weird. That's the only posts that are on here is some kind of um, raffle to win this gun. And that's it. So I think what it is is they're trying to get rid of this gun. <laughs> and it's like it probably was used for a murder or something. I don't know kind of unofficial way to launder a gun. Is that something you can do? I don't know. <clears throat> I found some other interesting contests. And we may have to get to these later. I'll have to say I'll have to remember to save them and I've got a big folder of different contests. I'm always finding stuff, but there's some interesting Facebook groups out there. For example, we have Baby Liking Contest, just for fun, and something about being in the Philippines, the Baby Liking Contest. Registration is ongoing for the Baby Liking Contest, BLC Prizes, grand winner, wins $5,000, 5000 uh, Philippine bucks, I don't know what the... I'm not sure what the currency is there, but if you want to join the baby liking contest, please be reminded you have to have so many points to join the baby liking contest. Um, and there's another one, three months old, a uh, picture of a baby. I guess that was entry number 118. We love your baby, so you're going to win or something. I'm not sure. Kind of odd. Tips to gain more points. Invite people. And I guess you submit pictures of your baby. There's another one. Penelope. Entry number 190 entry number 197. And then I go to their website as a blogspot, baby liking contest. ph.blogspot.com. And all it says is baby liking contest. There's nothing here. So this is kind of weird, but it is something in the Philippines, so maybe there's something lost in translation. Oh, here's the participants in the contest. There's a bunch of pictures of these babies. Uh, Mark Lucas. And I guess people go in and like the pictures. It looks like uh, you post the they enter the baby pictures and then people go in and like the picture. And that's how they know if you're going to win, if you get the most likes. And it looks like other people are commenting and tagging people maybe to get them to like the baby picture. I don't know. I can't quite figure that out. Um, some cute babies, I guess. Children. Kind of weird. The baby liking contest. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, that was cool. 
we'll, we'll visit some of these other ones that I found the next time we do this damn thing. And I'll, then I'll probably forget about him. We'll never see him again, but that's what we do. I'll probably go back and check on some more Facebook stuff because that's where the weird... That's where the, that's where the weird stuff is over on Facebook. And now it's time for our next segment. Let's get into it now. It's Voice of the People. It's Voice of the People. Remember this segment? It's a segment where it first started that we were going to go on Twitter because I started doing voice messages. But now we're going on to Clubhouse and listening to some stuff on there, which I learned the other day that you can uh, get banned from Clubhouse if you record some of these things without the other people uh, knowing about it or consenting to be recorded. So this could be, uh, we could be getting ourselves banned from if anyone found out about the, um, the, the voice of the people segment. But I recorded a little clip of a guy. I'm not going to say he's one of my favorite guys, but I thought I need to record this just for uh, the segment, which is uh, this guy, Crypto de Medici. <laughs> I was doing a, was on Clubhouse, so I thought I would record it. Let's see if we can hear this. If we can't, that would be a real tragedy. I had to record a screen cap. Does anyone... I think we had to wait for a minute for the Medici to show up. Hmm, not hearing any sound. Well, that stinks. This guy was talking his, head, his damn head off, so... Be something going on with my thing. This was working a second ago. Frick. Yeah, it says if you record without people's permission, um, that you could be banned. And I'm about to be, I'm about to be banned for this not working. It, uh, it was working a second ago, but now nothing's happening. That's unfortunate. It really is, because that was going to be cool. Anyway, you missed out on Crypto de Medici. Let's see if we'll hear some other. See if we'll hear some other clubhousers on here. Uh, Shakespeare here is go. being challenged viciously. I mean, these are things that, you know, things are happening rapidly, right? And it's all kind of, I guess, Craig, you would you would say, it's kind of a shaking of some of the foundational institutions of our society, right? I mean, that I we're think, in. Right I think now. so. I think Shakespeare's been canceled. David, if you're going to use the word uh, mathematics, I'm going to need, we're going to need trigger warnings. Uh oh, I'm triggered. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe we could spend a couple of minutes sort of just laying out uh, sort of the high level for people who are who are new to George. This is working. big ideas. What have you found is the most sort of concise way of of explaining mimetic theory or or explaining his, his core uh, his core contributions? Big ideas on Gerard. Well, I talk for two is. hours on live radio a day, so I'll give it to Craig to give a quicker. <laughs> I don't know who Gerard is. Gerard Depardieu. Craig, you may be on mute or. Uh, uh, Craig's or on place, mute. Uh, that we can get here. Are you speaking right now? Yeah, so, sorry about that. My, my Wi Fi was just cutting out, sorry. so I just had to reconnect on my uh, cellular data. Should be good now. Sorry. Uh, Greg, Greg, I was just asking, what's sort of the most concise way that you explain uh, uh, Gerard's sort of core contribution uh, to, um, uh, to people who, who, are, who are, are unfamiliar? I don't know who Gerard is. I'm going to peace out on that. This sounds interesting. Drunk uncles. Rider sprint. Rider sprints. 20 minutes on, 5 minutes off. Go. What is that about? Um... But it's, it's just uncles. one of those things that um, my oldest daughter went to get her tags, new tags for her car today. And she came home because she couldn't get them. There was some snafu with the DMV. Oh, and she was like, <laughs> I had a panic attack while I was oh, driving frick. home because like, I kept on being afraid that I would be pulled over. 
for not having my tags. And then it's just like, I'm scared. Scared. So yeah, it's just, it's a rough, it's a rough time right now. Hmm. What do you think, like, what do you think can be done to like, hmm. to stop this? I was if, invited I mean, to that's be a, huge a speaker question, just but now. I heard that hmm. last <laughs> Uh, that was uh, interesting. That was our friend Charles Beckwith was in there. He's a gusher guy. And one someone just invited me to join in on the chat. So, <laughs> maybe I can't do that. I'll get in trouble. How about this one? How to start Startup Club. How to stop struggling with your marketing. I want to make sure I get in on some of these chats where there's lots and lots of people. And no one wants me to join to talk. That one had Charles Beckwith though. The drunk uncles. Hmm. Okay, so I gotta make sure next time I join, there's gonna be a lot of people. This one this one says it has Sia. I think Sia is a, is a, uh, uh, is a famous uh, musician. Word of mouth referrals, but in terms of reaching people on a national level, um, for example, real you know, Sia. reaching people in other states or across you know, in California, Florida, Texas. Um, this is like a startup um, thing. See ya. Nutrition coaching. Nutrition Any coaching. shape or form of advice as to how I can go about doing that in a professional manner without seeming um, salesy. I like to keep my Instagram um, and my reputation as being 100% authentic. Um, so any advice on how to reach people would be great. Sure. Uh, I have, I think we have great, um, you know, great panel today to actually answer your question. And maybe I'll start with Chiara because I think Chiara, you also do uh, a lot of PR and a lot of marketing, in, you know, for Okay, this is boring, but that's companies. Sia, Anastasia Bartram. And now this is interesting. This is going to get me into maybe on another show. We'll talk about this thing called BitClout. It's something to do with crypto and uh, having a presence online or something. She's she's on BitClout. And I heard that the Krasensteins were on there. And that piqued my interest immediately. Immediately? Yeah, so anyway, that's pretty boring, whatever that was. Okay, I don't care about that. How are we doing on time here? I guess my video I recorded, my screen cap, it didn't record the sound. So I was banned. It says that I would violate the guidelines if I recorded this. So we don't get to hear Crypto de Medici. I guess that means I can delete this video, which is good. Save up some space on the old phone. Uh, let's see, some other stuff here, extraterrestrial. That could be good. Uh, let's see what that's got going on here. Focus. Uh, and so that's one possible theory that I find pretty convincing. But at the end of the day, I don't know what to believe. I just I tend to lean on that theory because so far it's the best one. And and we have no we have no testimony. Freaking aliens. Testimony of people who are on the ship and they're like, oh yeah, like I saw a pyramid. With my own eyes, like, like, the naked eye. Saw a freaking alien. I would, I would take that very seriously. But yeah, right you now, know what? That's all we have to go on. Can I ask you a question, Matt? Uh, Nick West also uh, t tried to debunk the uh, Tic Tac UFO's rotation as mm. it's not the rotation of the craft, but it's the rotation of the camera. Am I correct? Uh, yes, he did some, uh, some, he tried to debunk those videos. But I found that uh, when you combine uh, the videos with the testimony of those pilots, the Tic Tac really UFOs, because so many people saw it with their naked eye uh, that you just can't debunk it. You, know what I mean? you uh, just can't do it. You can't debunk pilots, uh, that stuff. Okay, man, this is not. This isn't doing too good. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. This is doing great. The segment. How, what about this one? The 
Drop 36, the CIA on the astral plane. Now this, this has got to be good. Just for the simple fact that, you know, a lot of people aren't really familiar with astral projection or mm. what have you. So I guess my question would be for Jenny or anyone who would really have any input. Uh, so, so I, I've dealt with astral projection since I was like 12, 13. Uh, through growing up, I always thought I had something wrong, schizophrenia. I thought all kinds of mm -hmm. medical terms, um, you know, always got shunned away by doctors as hmm. I, I'm not asking for a direct answer. Cause I know probably nobody really has a definitive answer, but mm, do you have any idea what would be the reason why this would like, um, I guess what we would call astral projection, why it would continuously happen to someone like in, in, in astral projection, my position where I'm not, uh, like seeking it or, 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 you know, intentionally doing anything to provoke that to happen. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes. People have them spontaneously, spontaneously a lot more often astro projection. than you realize. And um, oh, sometimes they don't realize what they are. Um, sometimes they come in the form of like a lucid dream state. Sometimes... Um, you know, they, they happen in so many different ways that, um, but it's not that unusual. And that's what Bob Monroe is actually experiencing. And he went to the doctor. He thought he was, something was physically wrong with him. Yeah. Hmm. And he went and saw several doctors. And finally, one of them said, well, actually this happens. You know, it's, it's not that unusual. And just um, astral projecting. it's been happening for thousands of years. And why it happens to some people spontaneously versus others i'm not sure it probably hmm. has to do with your that's crazy it just happens to you that is great you'll just astrally project out of there oh man i'm gonna check but i want to check back in with the big ideas on gerard and we'll, then we'll get out of here if this doesn't deliver then sort of like cycle of, of, of viciousness and then there's all this intensity that needs to get uh, sort of uh, released by 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 a scapegoat is, is that the connection between uh, the two ideas a mimetic uh, desire and, and scapegoating mimetic they're talking about memes yeah I'd, I'd, I'd say that's right um, I mean right. It, it's important to think about it really simply too right it, it, it's Gerard singular insight okay was... I don't know about this segment anymore but uh anyway it gives you an insight on what's going on on uh, clubhouse which is an app that not a lot of people have the pleasure of being a part of uh, but if actually if you'd like to join i'm looking at the app here i have six invites uh, so if you're on iphone hey you want to invite and you want to hear some crypto guys and some startup people and as you can tell, it's really exciting. There's a lot going on, and it's it's one of, it's a thrilling time to be on the clubhouse, hearing random people talk about boring stuff. So uh, let's get into another segment. Speaking of boring stuff, <laughs> uh oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Hopefully not. I'm not supposed to say bad stuff about my own show, but it's my show. Um, this is a good segment, though. This will get us going. It's the dream scene. The dream scene. I've been having some crazy dreams. I'm going to try not to go on a big rant. And actually, I'll be dreaming here in a little bit when I go to bed. But <clears throat> having some weird, having some weird dreams lately. I think a lot of dreams about being in the old hometown where I grew up way back in the days. So I've got a website pulled up that's going to hopefully explain what that's all about. And I'm going to try to be a little bit more brief on my um, my dream descriptions because that kind of gets out of hand with these things. But I thought these were kind of funny. I had a dream about uh, I was in the old hometown, like I said before, and I was trying to help a couple of people find this a church that they were using um, using bats as part of their church ceremony. So it's sort of like the snake handlers 
Except it was like bats in cages, which I think maybe came from maybe like Ace Ventura 2, you know, where he has the bat. Which, if you haven't watched that, don't do it. It, it doesn't hold up, even though there's some funny parts. But uh, overall, pretty problematic. A lot of bad stuff going on in that. But anyway, the bats in the cage. And I uh, was in my old hometown. Found this church. Trying to find a church where they had bats. And it ended up being in this underground bunker. Behind the middle school. So that's pretty weird. Then this other dream I had the other night. This one was weird. Of course, I was back in the old hometown. Usually, a lot of dreams I'm at my parent. I'm at my parents' house. I guess we call it the boyhood home. Um, so I have a lot of dreams where I'm there, just doing random stuff. This one, I was late for a hair appointment. Gonna get a haircut. I was trying to leave the house. And I was very rushed and like, I gotta get this hair appointment on time. But I had to make my lunch. I was making my lunch. I had my lunch box out. I was making lunch. But I kept grabbing all this weird stuff that you wouldn't think would be in a lunch. Like I couldn't find anything to make lunch out of. So I had was cutting up pieces of apples frantically and I had these big chunks of like ice, like ice chunks. I was making a chopped salad with ice and apples and, I don't know, peppers or strawberries or something really weird. I was like, ah, I gotta get in my hair appointment. Then I made it to the hair appointment. on. No, I was a little bit late. And then the hairdresser was like, I'm glad you're, you made it. Uh, you're pushing back some of my appointments, but it's okay. So then I got my hair cut. Then I'm, I was walking around and looking at some buildings with graffiti on them. And ran into an old friend from high school I haven't seen in millions. We went to this sports bar. And there was this... <laughs> I forgot about this part. There was this thing where there was a big giant computer. Hmm, that's kind of weird. And the computer was like telling everyone that they needed to go... Everyone get in line and go up to the computer and type a message into their future self. And so everyone was getting up across the restaurant and doing a dance like they were on the soul train, dancing down the aisles to go to the computer to put in a message to their future self. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> so what does it mean when you, when you dream about your hometown? This is from dreamstop.com. Hometown. Dreaming about your hometown is a very personal dream symbol. And its meaning depends on your actual experience growing up in your hometown. Did you grow up in a small town or a large city? Were the people in your town friendly, unfriendly, or annoyingly meddlesome? This is not a dream symbol with a single meaning. Oh, good. Goody. But reflecting on your experiences growing up in your hometown can give you some insight into what the symbol means for you in particu particular. The feelings and experiences you had growing up are being evoked in this dream. It may also represent a fear of failing in your journey or endeavors. If you give up on a trip in your dream and return to your hometown. Interesting. Uh, and we've got some comments here. Dream of returning to my old hometown to work for some project. As I walked around a bit, I remembered the old stores that had been replaced by newer businesses now in the old buildings. Happy yet bittersweet reminiscences. Huh. Genovia says, I always dream about... Me being Chase, and I'm always running to save my own life. I have hundreds of dreams like this one, but this is just a mild one where I'm not being killed, but the people who I am close with, I saw myself running away from different things and people who are refraining me to go away in that hometown. There's this one guy who almost died because and forgot to let him take one medicine while he worked his car for us to be safe, but he ended up choking I did everything, so let him swallow that medicine, even though he is breathless and no life. And he came back to life again. In the stream, there are many beggars who are just kids being trapped in that town. Beggars who fight. Jeep. Jeep, who's not letting you go down because their route is just roaming around, but in that town only. They forbid you leaving, and I always wonder why I have these kind of dreams. Whoa. That's a crazy dream. 
don't have a lot of dreams about dying, thankfully. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. It's kind of interesting. I want to get into reading other people's dreams <laughs> instead of mine. They're kind of boring. Of course, we've got tr Christian dream interpretation. That could be a good path to go down. Interpretations come from God. Uh, interpreting Christian dreams. So we'll have to get into that. The burning bush. That could be in a dream. The fish. That's a symbol of Christianity. And bi flowers. Here's one. In biblical dream interpretations, flowers are a reference to the Sermon on the Mount. Where Jesus held up the lilies of the valley. Cool. So if you, if you have a dream about flowers, um, this is a sign to trust in God to take care of you. Okay, so I feel like every every um, interpretation is going to be something about how God loves you or something. Stupid. <laughs> okay, one last dream. This is cool. This is kind of an interesting website. People commenting their dreams. I like this one. K. Hello, here is my dream for interpretation. I was holding hands with a specific guy. We have a history because we tried to date for a little bit, but we quickly realized it wasn't what was best. We remain friends. We were sitting side by side in a restaurant setting. I was in one booth and he was in another booth. This music is intense. I was in one booth. He was in the other booth. We were still close and able to hold hands comfortably. He was being kind of kind and gentle and kind of rubbing my hand. Uh-oh. Uh, across from from the table of my both of my booth was a mutual friend of ours. All of a sudden I was in front of him and he was giving me a box with a ring in it. It was very clear in the dream that this wasn't a proposal, maybe just a gift he wanted to give me. He opened up opened the box and the ring was gold with lots of jewels, but I could only tell that the ring was considered cheap, bought from Walmart as something I really thought in the dream. I was still happy with the ring and I gladly accepted it. I just knew that the ring could have been better quality or more expensive. Okay. So the dream interpretation is that he makes a commitment but it won't be honest. Maybe a confession. It's cheap and it'll fall through. The booth symbolized two hearts in separate places. That's why it didn't work out. Still holding hands means the friendship that was kept. Caressing your hand means he still confides in you. The mutual friend is, is what got in between the relationship or what you was focused on and you share similar interests. They may have known the truth too, but you still like the other guy. Oh man. Don't settle less. Don't settle for less, my love. Dang. Another one says, Good dreams. I was in this room and I was scared. I called for Jesus to come. I want to see him. I wanted him to come get me. I asked to talk to him. I was afraid. Oh man, this is crazy. Something about diseases. Okay, <laughs> that was exciting. That was exciting stuff. Well, thanks for listening to the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. Woo! Almost forgot. Uh, almost forgot. I had a new sound drop. Forgot to play this. Oh no, we gotta go, but I gotta play this last sound drop. Uh, let's see if I can get it loaded up in here. And here we go to do different sound drop. Uh, scary, gross, ugly. <laughs> uh oh, I didn't get. Uh, scary, gross, ugly. Hold on, hold on. Uh, scary, gross, ugly. <laughs> scary, gross, ugly. Okay. Thanks for listening. That was pretty fun. I'm glad we could hear from Christopher Schmidt. Uh, may have to rethink this Voice of the People segment. I don't know how I feel about it. If you like the Voice of the Seg, if you like the Voice of the People segment, leave a comment down below. Definitely let me know uh, what you think about the Voice of the People. This has been another episode of the Cool Podcast. The cool Podcast. Copyright uh, B Wolf 2021 Podnet Media. Podnet Media. Rights all rights reserved. Uh, therein, no one shall ever make a copy. And this is the one and true uh, show that everyone loves. And can't stop that's pretty much it.
We love Podnut Media. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the show. Father on the Banco. We'll be seeing ya. Oh no, I'm about to grant myself. Alright, we'll be seeing you next time. Bye bye. The cool podcast. The, the, the cool podcast. Woo! Yes, sir. Ha ha ha.